Good morning all. New printed circuit boards from JLC PCB. Now I've just looked at JLC PCB's website and uh, the news is that everything's back to full operating strength. Certainly this turned up uh, pretty quickly after I sent it off. So what have we got in here? Well we've got another pen and inside here some green printed circuit boards. And uh, yeah, these are going to be quite interesting because these are me having another go at this, my Arduino Playboard. It's no longer called Arduino Playboard, as you will see. Let's see what name I went for. I only needed five of these because this is really still an experiment. Um, in trying to get a solderless sort of backboard for Arduino and other modules like OLED display. And you can see that I've now called this one Giuliano. So this name Giuliano, where does that come from? Well, it had to sound a bit Arduino-ish, so the no on the end. And then I thought the no on the end could be like no solder. So I came up with Giuliano with a single N initially, but then it looked a bit like Julia no solder. Now I know, I know a lot of people call me Julia. I don't know whether the autocorrect takes the N off the end, but I didn't really want to call this Julia no solder. So it's Julian no solder. And Giuliano is what my boss used to call me when I worked in IT in central London. He'd say, Giuliano, all the servers have gone down, or Giuliano, the internet's failed something like that so i quite like the name and so that's what this is now called giuliano now you can see immediately that i fixed the first problem it's oh i don't like the fact that my lights on it's very dark today it's a very cloudy day uh it's landscape so it fits video much better than the previous one which i mistakenly did portrait now here's the issue i have created on here a number of footprints, special purpose footprints for the Nano, the OLED and the sensor, but with staggered pins. Yes, if I tip this, hmm, I'm not sure that it's very easy to see that these are staggered, but these pads have been shifted, that one to the right of its nominal position, by, now what was it, two and a half thou, two and a half mils. The holes are 34 mils, so you can see that two and a half mils is not much of a shift. And uh, that I figured was the right amount, but I'm experimenting. I have literally no way of knowing. So I just had to pick a number. And there were all sorts of really interesting issues like this one here. I've staggered it up, down, down, up because I couldn't go for up, down, up, down because that would result in a rotation you'd see that this thing would go in and then twist so because it's only four pins if this had been five pins I could have gone up down up down up and it would have been symmetrical but with four pins I couldn't do that so I had to go up down down up I think that's what that one is and that one's probably down up up down this one the Nano has actually 15 pins down each side so I've gone in and in the other way out out in in and so on and it's symmetrical. Now I'm predicting that the OLED's going to go in really easily and the Nano is going to be an absolute pig to get in there. But that's just a prediction. Let's have a look at what happens in reality. So here we go. Let's try the easy one first, which is the four pin OLED. Now I should be able to get the four pins in there. Oh, very easily. Yeah, too easily. So I haven't got enough shift on there, have I? Two and a half mils, two and a half thou, actually hasn't resulted in it tightening up. I need more shift on that. Let's try the Nano. Now this Nano appears to have slightly thicker pins than the other ones I was using. The other ones I was using are now on my um, sensor boards, one of which is actually in the shed at the moment. So that goes that way around. I, I put a little um, marking for the USB connector on there. Now, how easily is this going to slip into the holes? Oh, actually, really very easily. Ah, but that's doing exactly what I wanted it to do. At this position here, 
that doesn't feel overly tight but as you push it down it tightens up and starts to bind and that's bound really nice and the reason I think or I thought this was going to work is because the deflection of the pins when they're at their furthest extent from this plastic base um, is not significant because uh, that being two and a half thou up and two and a half thou down you can't even see that deflection can you it really is tiny but then as you get near and near to this plastic base the deflection will be um, the, the plastic will act as a spring and try and resist that deflection and that's binding up really nicely so that's tight that's really tight in there which is perfect but the OLED hasn't tightened up particularly well. Now I'm just wondering whether perhaps if you have a smaller number of pins you really need to go for a bigger offset. It's really quite difficult to get this right. Now these are up, down, down, up. So if I bend these so the outer two go down. Where are my pliers? Yeah, let's put the outer two down a little bit and the inner two up a little bit. Uh, that's quite exaggerated. But anyway, let's put that in. Oh yeah, that's really very exaggerated. But that'll go in. So that fits nice and tight at its fullest extent, but I'd expect that now to loosen the further you go in. Well, it's okay tight, I guess, but it's going to be tightest when it's sitting at the end of the pins. Those two are in there fairly tight, so let's put power to this. I'll put computer power on it, and it should start counting because I put the millis counting uh, software in there. Of course, that's going to try and enumerate before it starts running. This is a VCC ground one. Let's try rebooting it. Is this going to work? Hmm. <laughs> Not yet. Hmm. Well, this is really embarrassing because this just is not working, which is very interesting. I've actually put a blink um, lead on before it writes to the I squared C and then led off afterwards. So you've got these very short flashes. So you can see that every half a second it's writing I squared C, but that's just not being uh, shown on the display. I've tried all three displays. <laughs> Giuliano, your printed circuit board doesn't work. This is really getting a bit tricky. Let me just try uploading the sketch again. And you can see I showed it from the light yeah, it's compiling this is a recompile so it should be reasonably quick but of course it isn't I'll cut some of this out come on how long does it take ah, okay there we go that's compiled oh it's uploading yeah and we can see the LEDs flashing so the nano is working But it's not writing to the OLED. Giuliano, fix it! So I'm just wondering whether I've got problems with the pins that go off to the OLED, because that's all it can be really. So I'm just going to touch them with the soldering iron, because this Nano had been playing up. It was in the transmitter for a while, and the power supply, that Ozito sort of um, power tool battery top adapter, USB thing, was just dropping out and it was doing it with this nano but not the other nano so there's clearly something wrong with this and I I don't know I kind of felt it might have been the crystal was stop oscillating or something but anyway I just need to retouch those pins I suppose I should take the power off while I do that so what am I looking at I'm looking at um, D4 and no A4 and A5 these don't seem to have been soldered terribly well I'm not sure whether it was me that soldered these so that's a4 i just wonder whether some of these have cracked maybe uh five volts on this side i'll touch up i'll touch up ground anyway even though it's not used on this side but ground is used on the other side 
let's try that just remaking those joints actually arthur my boss um got in touch the other day on facebook he's living in russia now but i must admit his his words are ringing in my ears at the moment fix it no it's still not talking to the oled this is becoming really quite intriguing now another thought that's occurred to me is that when i staggered these pads these tracks sort of just jumped into strange positions because and they had to be replaced onto the staggered pads it, it was a little bit messy so i'm just wondering whether perhaps there's a hairline um, non-join between the tracks and the pads so i'm going to bleep them all out so that sort of thing to there and that's vcc so that's the fourth one up to there that's working ground is obviously that one that one and the fourth one up on this side so that's fine um i think that's scl isn't it so that's there there and a4 which no a5 which is the lower one of those and sda that one that one and a four which is the upper one of these everything bleeps out fine i'm mystified ah right i've got it to work by bending the nano in its holes and that's fine but if i place that flat doesn't work reset it doesn't work so one of those pins is not making a contact now i can find that by continuity testing it so let's bleep it out um, vcc on here five volts oh this is going to be quite tricky to vcc on there nothing uh, ground on here to ground nothing a4 to sda I mean nothing how can none of these be connected a5 it's ridiculous i've got no continuity on any of the four pins so i can get this to work but it needs fudging again it needs the nano sitting at an angle it's trapped in there and it's working fine uh, this is sitting on its sort of bent pins if i push that in right in carries on working but of course it's a little bit loose there i just feel that this needs more stagger i went for two and a half thou two and a half mils offset relative and then the other one was offset the other way so there's a five mils relative offset but these holes in and of themselves are 34 mils so my stagger is really a very tiny amount i think i'm going to have to do another one of these i don't want to give up on this because i quite like the idea of you just grab a few items in fact i'm going to get the sensor now and solder a pin array on that and push that in and put the program that actually does temperature and humidity yeah let's move on to that right now oh it's a rainy day am i going to get, be able to get that shed door open <laughs> well let's give it a go well i did manage to get the door open so that's good and here's the shed um sensor and i'm gonna to have to take the uh, SI7021 off here because I cannot find another one. I've found all sorts of other things like BMP, 280s, uh, HTUs and SHTs and all that sort of thing. So that's going to come out. I can't do this one-handed but I have to pull that sensor out of these DuPont wires. There's no crossover there so that's fine. And take it back to the workshop. Okay that's counted up quite high hasn't it since I've been out in the shed. Right, let's put the sensor in so it's going to fit in there with its stagger, which, yes, definitely doesn't feel like I've got enough stagger on this. But let's load the program which reads the sensor and puts it on the display. Oh, I'll need to connect it back to my computer for that. And yeah, there it is. It's working a treat. And it looks really good, doesn't it? Until I sort of tip it over. And you see that the nano is tipped and you see that the sensor is tipped and this one of course i bent the pins on it and that's sitting 
up because if I push that in flat it starts to get wobbly. So really the only remaining issue with this is the stagger isn't enough. I just need to redo this with more of a stagger. So instead of two and a half mils left and then two and a half mils right, which gives an offset of five mils, maybe I should go for five mils left and right and get a total offset of 10 mils. Perhaps that would do it. And I could actually take these holes a little bit smaller. In fact, I was thinking the other day, these are 34 mil holes. Now I've done 36 mil holes and on the vocoder boards I did 32 mil holes. But how many different sizes of drill bit have JLC PCB actually got? And if you ask for a 34 mil hole, do you actually get a 34 mil hole? And then of course the other thing is they have to drill the hole in the FR4 first and then put in the, the through hole plating and then put the, um, what's it called, the hassle with lead uh, solder coating on this. So they must oversize drill the hole such that when they put all the various coatings on, it comes back to the size that you specified. It's a complicated thing, isn't it, making PCBs? And I was chatting to someone, and I'm ever so sorry, I can't remember who, and comments aren't searchable. Um, to someone who was saying that there was a kit back in the 1970s, probably might even have been the 60s, um, called the Trionic system. And it had little plastic modules with transistors, resistors, capacitors in them. And they were a push fit into a backboard. Now the pins were quite large and the holes in the board were probably two and a half mil, well, eighth of an inch maybe back in those days. And that, I must admit, is in my mind when I'm doing all this. I want a system where you can just take off-the-shelf components that you buy on eBay from China, you just push them into a PCB, you don't even solder it, hence no solder, and you have a working system. That's what I'm trying to achieve here, and I'm nearly there with my Giuliano board. And I'm just wondering actually whether you could have the software as maybe a QR code on the back of the board. How much data can you put in a QR code? Could you put an entire Arduino sketch on there so that you just plug the items into the board, scan the QR code, mm, not sure how you'd get that into your PC for programming. Yeah, I wonder if that's possible. I think I just need a little bit more offset on my staggering so I'll have to update my footprint files that I made for the Nano, the OLED and the this size of sensor. But I'm pretty much there. I'm not far off. Cheerio.